those days. Yeah? So he was um, he was born from the great Rishi who was married to the low caste woman, yeah? nearly outcast. So the, the woman's name was Itara. Itara means other. She was not belonging to the to the you know varna of Brahmins. She was outcast. So her son Mahidasa was always uh, Mahidasa, the, the how to say the slave of earth actually, the servant of earth. Mahi is earth, Dasa slave. So Mahidasa Itareya, it is his name. So he named himself after the mother. <clears throat> And the whole tradition, Aitareya, is from Itara. <laughs> he named the whole tradition after his outcast mother, <laughs> just in, <laughs> because he was, you know, mocked by the Brahmins all the time, <clears throat> that he is in, of inferior nature. <laughs> now you have it. Forever we will remember Aitareya in his mother. <laughs> This is the power of consciousness. I love it, how, how it was done in the past, you know. <clears throat> we have similar thing, Taitiriya, Taitiriya is that bird Titiri. So it's these kind of very occult, very interesting names. So Aitareya Upanishad um, um, is unique in one way. That first three chapters, um, uh, according to Shankaracharya, uh, for the most initiate, yeah, it is the secret knowledge, knowledge which cannot be really explained or given uh, to anyone because it is it will not be understood. So it is a secret knowledge uh, only for those rishis who really understand what he is talking here about. So we will try to unpack it in our own way, of course. So let us look into it. So since it is uh, Rigvedia, we will read Shantipatha from Rigveda. Om Vang me manasi pratishtheta mano me vachi pratishthetam aviravir ma edhi vedas yama anistaha shrutam me ma prahasihi anena dhi tena horatran samdadhami ritam vadishyami satyam vadishyami tanmamavatu tadvaktaramavatu avatumam avatu vaktaram avatu vaktaram om shanti 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 So, Atma va idam eka evagra asit. Aitareya lost its Vedic accent, doesn't have a Vedic accent, it is Ekashruti. Atma indeed was uh, this alone indeed at the beginning. Agre in the beginning, eka eva alone indeed asit was idam this. So this is an interesting statement. You can see these statements all the time in the literature that the self was all this at the beginning or this at the beginning. What means this? It's a philosophical category. This means anything, whatever you see, whatever you don't see, whatever you can point as this is was Atman at the beginning, the self. So everything is the product of the self. There is nothing here which is not the product of that self. And notice, they don't speak about the divine or God. They speak about self, self-existent being. It's quite interesting in that sense. It's not even a religious. It's more fundamentally yogic or psychological literature. <clears throat> So nanyat kinchana mishat, nothing here was moving. Uh, 
and there was not else that saw. That's what Sri Aurobindo says. Na anyat kinchana, nothing here else was mishat. Mishat moving or nimishat closing, mishat opening the eye can be yeah? like winking, blinking. It can be translated as moving or opening the eye. Saw Sri Aurobindo say. Saikshata and he Atman thought. It is also translated as willed, which is a very interesting word. Ikshate means to see, he sees, or he wills. Uh, and many times translated both ways. Uh, and I was wondering about this for quite some time until I found the passage in the mother where she says that in the highest consciousness when the divine sees it wills <laughs> and that explained everything that seeing is willing in the highest consciousness actually whatever the divine sees it wills so he saw or he willed lokanus rajai iti may i create the worlds Lokan no srijai. Srijai iti is sandhi, srijai iti may I create. I will make me worlds from out my being, Sri Aurobindo translates. This is a very ancient old translation of Sri Aurobindo from the beginning of nine, uh, 20th century, before he he got his experiences. It was his first study of the Upanishads. So we have to uh, bear that in mind. Saiman Lokan Asrijata, and he created these worlds. Asrijata literally means cast out of himself. Out of himself, he cast these worlds. Now, the idea that he cast out of himself is impossible to imagine because there was nothing out of himself. He, he was everywhere alone, all this. So where is that out of himself? Basically, it tells us that he created something within himself where he was not aware of himself, and that was out. Or the darkness, the night. It implies immediately the absence of oneself. That means absence of awareness of oneself. He cannot stop being, but he can stop being aware of his own existence. Yeah. It's quite clear. There can't, can't be otherwise. If he alone is, so there can't be any space, anywhere, place, or space, or whatever, where he is not. He can be absent only in his awareness of himself. So once he withdrew his awareness from his own power, from his own existence, being, he became unaware of himself, and that is out. And into that out, thing where he is not aware of himself, he cast these worlds. They are the outing, the outing of his awareness. Ambho marichir maram apo dombhav pare na divam dyav pratishthanta riksham marichaya prithivi maro yad hastatta apaha. Let us go word by word. Ambhach marichich maram apach. So these are the worlds which he cast out of himself. Ambhas is the higher ocean, the supreme ocean. The ethereal waters, the waters of the higher supreme ocean, Ambhas. Marichich. Marichis are very uh, strange word which is used in the occult sense, meaning the particles of light within the space. It's like small particles of light covering the whole space. Marichis, the space. Maram, death. Notice that Marichi and Maram are from the same root, Mari. And we will talk about this a little more. There are two types of death 
and Apas. Apas is the lower waters, the inconscient waters. So there are superconscient waters, superconscient ocean, and inconscient ocean. There are two oceans. We, we find uh, references in the Rig Veda where he split and the upper waters and the lower waters. There was a split into two, the two worlds, the supreme ocean and the inconscient, subconscious ocean. And in between we have Marichi and Maram. Both are from root Mari. It's an amazing insight if you look also linguistically into these words. So Marichi is kind of dying out or a projection into the space from the side of the supreme ocean, whereas Maram is the projection from the lower waters. Yeah? So there are two projections which meet, the death and the death from the higher and the death from the lower waters. Hmm. Adach Ambach, that ocean, those waters, Parena Divam, Diauf Pratishta, um, kind of supported or, um, how to put it, the heaven is the foundation for those higher waters. So if you can imagine the heaven upstairs is the bottom line for those higher ocean. So it's as if you are in, in the room where you look up, up and in the ceiling you see the, the swimming pool and people are swimming there. That is heaven the end beyond there are waters. So the heaven becomes the, the, the bottom of the higher waters. Antariksham Marichayach. And the Marichis are this Antariksha space in between heaven and earth. That is the projection. Prithivi Maro. The uh, earth is death. Ya Adhastat. And what is below earth those are waters, lower waters, waters of the inconscient. Now you, have, you can see how he arranged. We have two oceans on the upper side of the upper stairs, upstairs, there is the heaven, which holds the upper ocean. Below there is Maram, uh, earth, which holds the lower oceans. And in between there are Marichis, Antarekshom. It's quite a beautiful picture, by the way. I was always surprised how, how uniquely they describe the worlds. Now, these are the locations, the locus. Okay, interesting, location and loka, eh? where you locate things. Eh? Um, but then he thought, so, so this is the first creation, but then he thought, Saikshata, Imenu Loka, these are the locations. Loka Palanus Rajai Iti, may I create the dwellers within the worlds or the guardians for my worlds. Loka Pala, as you recognize, Pala is the protector of the Loka. I have to dwell on this Pala a little more because Pala is not only a protector, but also a dweller, a filler, the one who fills the Loka. So I have the Loka, but I don't have anybody living in the Loka. Root Pa to protect and Pa has two meanings, to protect and to drink, which is Pibati, Pa. Yeah? So party protects and pa also to drink. Drink means to fill oneself with liquid, to fill oneself with something. So filling is protecting actually. Or this is the idea of protection. When you are full of something, you are protected. You don't have a gap which can be pervaded from outside, or occupied by some other force within you. You are full of already. And once you're full, 
sometimes they say in English he is pregnant already with his ideas. There is nothing which can actually conceive anything with it. <laughs> he is already full of something. He is bearing his own. So there is nothing which can penetrate or settle or, you know, deviate here. So this is the idea of protection. He is protected because, so the protectors and dwellers are the same idea. May I create the guardians or dwellers within the locus locations. So and from the adbiyah, from the lower waters, from the inconscient waters, Purusham Samudharitya, having pulled the Purusha, Amurchayat, he gave him a form or shape. Therefore, he gathered the Purusha, gathered out of the waters, Adbiyah, lower waters, from Apas, and gave him shape and substance. Now, there is a mysterious statement here, as Shankaracharya rightly said, it is only for the initiate knowledge. Why from the lower waters he pulled out the Purusha? And not from the Supreme, not from Ambas, but from Abbas. This is something to think of. We will come to it again. We leave it for now as a question. No? Why Purusha was pulled out from the inconscient waters, not from the superconscient? And what is this Purusha about? Now, we have Atman, we have the self, and now Atman created Purusha. Purusha was created by the self, which is always there. The self exists by itself. It does not, it is not born or it never dies, but it created this Purusha. So this Purusha, Tama Bhyatapa Tasya Bhitaptasya Mukham Nira Bhidyatayatan Dam Mukhad Vak Vajognir Nasikinira Bhidyatam and so on. So Tam Abhyatapat, he heated him up. He concentrated on him his consciousness. In heated, yeah, he created the heat within it. Tasya bhitap tasya, and by him heated up mukham, the mouth, nirabhidyata, broke forth. Yathandam, as, as the egg cracks, so his mouth cracked, broke forth. Mukhad, and from his mouth, vak, speech, word. At the beginning was the word, here he comes. Vacho Gnih, and from the word Agnih, Nira. So uh, from the word came fire. So Nasike Nira Bhidyetam, his nostrils broke forth. Nasika Bhyam Pranach, from the nostrils breathing or breath, breathing in, Pranadvayu. And from breath, vayu came into being. Akshini nirabhidyatam, his eyes broke forth. Akshibhyam chakshuk, from his eyes seeing, sight. Chakshusha aditya, and from the sight, sun came into being. Karnao nirabhidyatam, his ears broke forth. Karnabhyam shrotram, from ears um, hearing, Shrotra Dishaha, from the hearing, the space, the directions came into being. Now you can see that the light, the sun, the space um, were born from his capacity to see, to hear. They were not born from something else, and then we developed eye and hearing. Hearing was the cause of the space, seeing was the cause of light. Yeah. So it's a bit different way of looking at our universe. Twang um, nirabhidyatan. Twang is the, the skin, his skin broke forth. 
Tvačo lomani lomam hja oshad hivana spatajah. From his skin, the hair came into being, broke for the hair on the, on the skin. Loma bia oshad hivana spatajah. And from the hair, the gr greenery, the grass and forests came into being. Hridayam nerabhidyata, his heart broke forth. Hridayan mano, from his heart, mind. Manasas Chandrama, from the mind, the moon came into being. Moon is Soma, the delight. Nabhir nerabhidyata, his navel broke forth. Nabhya apanach, from his navel, breathing out. Apana Mrityu, and from the breathing out, death came into being. It's also very interesting because navel and breathing out is that which connects our embryo, us to embryonic life. And when we are born, that navel is cut and uh, we are kind of dying uh, to one life and are born to another. So this is the transition from one life to another, which we can co call birth or death, because we are dying for one uh, location and are born to another location. The same as we are leaving the body, we are dying for this location in this body, and we are born to another location. Yeah? We are kind of entering another room. So a navel, in a, in a sense, it's physically also connecting our physical body to the womb, and also we have the navel or the string, which is coming from the same navel, subtle string, which connects our vital body to the physical, which is also cut when we are dying. <laughs> so that navel is a, is a unique kind of um, representative of the, of the transition of our uh, being from the subtle to the gross world. <laughs> Um, yeah. You said it's which gave uh, from where the mind came. Mind came from the heart. From Purusha's heart. Yes, heart and mind. Manas and and manas later in some case sense mind. Yeah, sense mind is actually operating by senses. Uh, and it is also, well, it's a loaded term. Vedic literature has more than 6,000 years and Manas changed its meaning from structure to structure. <laughs> there are several structures covered by this literature, starting from archaic uh, to magic, uh, mythical, mental. So in each structure, Manas um, has a different meaning. And how did moon come? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, we can leave it for now because uh, moon is soma. It is that delight and uh, that sensual delight, yeah, uh, which we are gathering, that soma, that mysterious enjoyment of existence, which is to be distilled and offered to the gods. And that is the soma yagas. It's, um, we leave it for now. Just we are just looking for the first time how these things are being manifested. We can't answer all the questions totally precisely because we have to keep the whole totality of the birth yeah, of this universe. This is a universal purusha which, uh, which generates the worlds around us and the faculties of consciousness which perceive these worlds. So the sight generates the light and the suns and the stars. The hearing generates the space and the directions. Yeah? So uh, the mind, that mind, the sense mind, the uh, enjoying the worlds is the Soma, the Chandrama, who is the Lord of all the nakshatras. Yeah, he is the, the husband of 27 nakshatras who are the universe. So we, we are like um, first time touching this topic. Let us finish with the, so navel. Navel is that mrityu. And then shishnam, his procreatory organ. 
broke forth near Abhidhyatash. She she snat retas, and from the procreatory organ, the retas, the seed came into being on the stream, retas abach, and from the retas, the lower waters of existence. Here there is some mysterious connection to the lower waters of Purusha. The seed is, is to be planted into the lower waters. It is a part of the lower waters. It is a part of the embodiment. Purusha is made for the embodiment's sake, otherwise Purusha is not needed. That's why it was made from the lower waters. It has to correspond to that lower waters for our embodiment here in the inconscient. It cannot be coming from the upper worlds because he would have nothing in common with these worlds. He would not be able to conceive or to live in this lower hemisphere. So these devatas, once they were born, here they are. We are coming to the second chapter. Taeta devataha sreshta. All these gods, devatas, are cast out, born, asmin mahatyarnave prapatan. They fell into this lower ocean, mahati arnave, into the inconscient ocean, into the great inconscient ocean. They fell or they plunged into the inconscient ocean. So all the devotas, the hearing, the seeing, the, the, the word, the mind, you know, the breathing in, the breathing out, all of them plunged into the inconscient ocean. Tam ashanaya pipasa bhyam anvavarjat. And their hunger and thirst leaped upon them. Ashanaya or Ashana, this hunger, desire to eat, Pipasa, desire to drink. So the desire to eat and drink jumped, plunged on them, kind of uh, leaped upon them, you know, tormented them, these faculties there. There was neither what to drink and what to eat. There was no food or drink. There was thirst and hunger. What thirst and hunger represent is kind of interesting. Lack of enjoyment and sustenance. They were lost, as it were. And they were tormented of, by that state in which you are lost. You don't have the enjoyment of the universal Purusha from which you came. You do not have that Ananda of the universal Purusha. You don't have the, the, the sustenance, the being, the embodiment. Ta enama bruvan, and they spoke to him, to the uh, Atman. Ayatanam navprajanihi. Create for us the uh, abiding place in which we, the dwelling place. Yasmin Pratishthita, in which established Annam Adameti, we can partake of food. We can enjoy the existence. Tabhyo Gam Anayat, and he brought to them the cow. Ta'abruvan, and they said, Navai no yamalamiti, it is not enough for us. Tabhyoshvam anayat, ta'abruvan navai no yamalamiti. He brought them a horse, and they said, it is not enough for us. Tabhyav purusham anayat, ta'abruvan sukritam bateti, purusho vava sukritam. And he brought to them purusha, the man. Tabruvan, and they said, Sukritam Bateti. Oh, it is well done, Sukritam. Purushovava Sukritam, Purusha is well done indeed. Ta Abravit, and he told them, Yathayatanam Pravishateti, enter him as your dwelling place, as your habitation. 
Now look what happened. Agnir Vagbhutva, Agni became the word. Mukham Pravishat entered his mouth. Vayu Prano Bhutva, Nasike Pravishat, Vayu became the Prana and entered his nostrils. Aditya Shakshur Bhutva, the sun became the sight and entered his eyes. Dishakshrotram Bhutva, Karnal Pravishan, the space became the hearing and entered his ears. Oshadhivanaspatayo Bhutva, Lomani Bhutva, the greenery became the hair on his skin. Tvacham Pravishan entered his skin. Chandrama Mano Bhutva, Hridayam Pravishat. And the moon became the mind and entered his heart. Mrityur Apano Bhutva, Nabhim Pravishat. And the death became the breathing out and entered his navel. Aporeto Bhutva, Shishnam Pravishan. And the waters became the seed and entered his procreatory organ. Look at this beautiful creation. So first, the universal faculties were projected out of the universal Purusha into the inconscient ocean, being tormented there by the lack of enjoyment and being. They cried to him to create for them the habitation in which they could partake and enjoy the creation. And he gradually created for them a form. He created many forms before which were not sufficient for his embodiment. And finally, when he arrived at Purusha's form, the form of man, it was recognized as well done. And he invited these faculties to dwell within him as their habitation. And so one by one, they reassembled within individual creation, individual Purusha, the universal faculties dwelling within the individual form. We all share the universal faculties. We all have sight, hearing, word. Yeah. It is not my word. It's not my seeing. It is the seeing in the word and the mind of the universal Purusha. But it is in this individual form reassembled. It's profound. And it is in the evolutionary process. Slowly he evolved to this form of Purusha and they found their dwelling habitation within him. And then, interesting thing, tam ashana pipase, ashanaya pipase, ambrutam. And to him the hunger and thirst spoke. Avabhyam abhiprajanihi iti. Create for us the dwelling place. Te abravit. And he spoke to them. Etasu eva vam devatasu. In these devatas, abhajami, I am making you the the shareholders are the right word. I assigned you as shareholders in these devotas. Etasu bhagin yau karomiti. I make you the partakers of enjoyment in these devotas. Tasmad yasyai kasyai cha devataya haver grihyati. Therefore, if to anyone, any godhead, there is the offering to be made or is made, Bhagin Yao Evasyam, the partakers in those devatas are also the hunger and thirst. And this is profound. This is a profound insight that whatever the offering is made to whatever the faculty, the partakers in that offering are also 
hunger and thirst. So the faculties become hungry and thirsty in this manifestation. They are looking for their self-satisfaction and they create what we know as the ego sense within us. Because they are now looking for their self-satisfaction. Because hunger and thirst is inbuilt into them. Okay, I will stop here. If you have some questions, observations. So two chapters, we will take the third one uh, next time. I clearly see here two creations. Yeah, First creation of the locus and then of the dwellers. And their evolution. Evolution starts with the second creation. You are speechless yeah, after all this. <laughs> Such a beautiful vision. Leaves us speechless. Yeah. yeah, Melissa, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah. No, no, just, just wanted just to say that, that I guess, I guess um, um, it's just so, so profound, profound that it's difficult to find any questions. So. Yeah. yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. Me too, yeah. You want to let it be for a while and sink in. Exactly. And... Mm -hmm. I apologize, I had to be working at the same time, and my sure, work sure. today is gardening, so. <laughs> yeah, great, garden. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're most welcome. So we cover these first two chapters, which um, Shankaracharya considers to be only for the initiate, this vision of the worlds and the dwellers of the worlds. So the contra so the difference um, between the Atman and Purusha is vivid here. Atman is the self which always exists and Purusha is the projection or creation by Atman of the faculties of consciousness which will represent the self in manifestation. And how he got involved into manifestation by these very faculties plunging into the ancient ocean and evolving out of it into the form of Purusha. Yeah. Uh, and thus Atman is being represented. So Purusha, as according to Sri Aurobindo, is the Lord where is uh, Atman is the self. And there are only two realities, the Lord and the self. The self is what is, the being, and the Lord is the consciousness. And consciousness has faculties. And that's why uh, the Upanishads never speak about consciousness as abstraction of some kind, as we usually speak in our uh, conceptual language. We always speak about consciousness as something like some kind of, you know, a concept. It's not a concept. It's a very concrete activities of some purusha behind. Yeah? And these activities are faculties. That's why Upanishads are speaking always about the faculties and not about consciousness, about speech, hearing, seeing, uh, being in the body, thinking, feeling. Yeah? So these are the major faculties. And it's quite interesting that we do not see consciousness in that way. Sankhya separated us, Indriyas, from consciousness and made indriyas to be inferior and something very 
small and object related it is no more purusha related it is not representing purusha here it represents prakriti that's what sankhya did and we became bewildered we do not know ourselves we do not know that actually purusha is present in us through these very faculties purusha became abstraction became transcendental abstraction to which we have no access and it is much more concrete and much more real than we think about it So, uh, Vladimir. Yes. So, spirits created Purusha, and we came from Purusha, right? Absolutely. That's why we have these eyes, ears, hands, nose. <laughs> That's how we <laughs> built it up. Indefinitely. And then the self, the Atman is an extension of prakriti i'm a little confused yeah such a beautiful doggy i can see melissa yeah. yes lassie or yeah but there was a movie about this dog yeah. right um Prakriti. Yeah, if we speak the Sankhyaic language, it would be quite different, yes. Um, prakriti in Purusha. Purusha is present within Prakriti. How? How does he present in Prakriti? Through his faculties, of course. He attends to her through his seeing, hearing, speaking, its attention. And she takes that attention and puts it into action and creates all this Panchamahabhutani. And this Panchamahabhutani is the, another language for these very worlds which came into being from the faculties of Purusha. And the, that's how we can, we see the same, we hear the same, we can communicate uh, the same, um, the same stuff we relate to each other through the universal faculties that's why we can understand each other and communicate and build the world together and see the same world because we share the universal faculties and if we would not share the universal faculties we would not we would see different worlds yeah? we would have different values different systems within each other but we share the same consciousness. And we are built in the same way. Not only we, animals have also eyes, ears, skin. They also touch, smell, <laughs> taste. They have the same set. And not only animals, but also, but also even uh, the, uh, the insects and fish and, and uh, birds and whoever yeah? and even plants we think about plants as if they are kind of uh, blind and this they are not blind they communicate and even somebody published uh, recently that uh, the trees have heartbeat they they don't have the heart as a location of uh, of particular heart but it is some way inbuilt that it it gives like one one push every time but in within like six hours or eight hours one push and that one push actually pushes the whole liquid up to the branches as exactly as the heartbeat does yeah pushing the uh, blood in us but that was registered by by somebody observing on the longer kind of period of time that these rhythmic pushes are taking place 
only once in eight hours or in one day. And that's why we don't register it, because we never we are never patient to wait for several days to hear whether it is rhythmically doing it. So even that. Nodes, uh, they have these, uh, they communicate through the mycelium network in their roots. Uh, I was reading about that. Yeah, and they, the, the, one can listen to the sound of the, the, not the communication exactly, but some sound if they really put their ears on the ground and try and listen to it. And um, then there is this very beautiful book, The Hidden Life of the Trees. It has a lot of uh, incidents mentioned. It's very beautiful. Yes, yes, I I know this. So you know, it's really amazing how they support each other, the trees through the roots, and how they create the environment for for the forest to grow. You know, so they can occupy any barren land by communicating through the roots, sending the the fungus to each other to support and to help. And, yeah, this reminds me of a very, only yesterday I went to this forest, it was like really uh, untouched, like once in a year people usually go there, so there are like these creeper plants which have, which have grown so old and they are like, they have this very huge root growing uh, on the mountains, below the mountains, it was so beautiful to see about that, this reminds me of that. Right. And they have seeds, we should not forget seeds. So they procreate, they, uh, they actually are yeah, like, hum like beings, you know, they, they, they are born, they are growing, they are becoming old and die, and they leave progeny. These are living beings, only we don't see them being alive, because we are so stupid, we are so stupidified by our mind, which looks only at the surface. And if it doesn't see it moving immediately, then it thinks it, it, it is uh, not alive. There were some experiments done with the plants. Maybe we spoke about it, yes? That that uh, it was in, a, in 90s, I remember those experiments, because um, they communicate through chemicals, a particular stuff which they kind of emit into their, their cells, which is registered by vibration by other plants. Um, so there were plants in the room and many people were going through the room. This is an experiment. And one guy comes to the plant and breaks the, the branch. Yeah? And they register immediately that there is a big emission of these chemicals in the plant and which is communicating it to other plants. Yeah? And then everything becomes, uh, again, uh, so to say, um, calm. And uh, uh, some days after, again, they do the same uh, kind of people are going through the room. And people are going through the room, plants are standing, so everything is okay. But when that man comes who broke the, the branch, the plant immediately emits this, uh, you know, warning chemical. <laughs> it remembers the man who broke the, the branch. And it gives a signal to other plants that they should know. These were the experiments first. I was so shocked when I read this. That means they have the memory. And the memory is within the, the liquid, within the water. Water has a memory, it seems. It can remember the events, the, the creatures. So now you, you we think about karmic. Uh, uh, consequences. This is karmic consequence for, for this man who broke the, the, the branch. Yeah? The plants remember him. They will meet him somewhere <laughs> one day <laughs> and he will stumble over, over some branch somewhere <laughs> and will break his arm or something. <laughs> I'm joking, but still, uh, it's kind of funny. And another... Uh... I mean, about plants, I, I read of an experiment of um, uh, playing two groups of plants. To one was played uh, ragas in the correct time of the day, and to the other one, ragas in the incorrect time of the day, which means the, the raga of the evening was played in the morning and so on. And um, the plants that were played the correct raga, the correct time of the day, they would prosper and 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 grow and and be very happy. And the other ones, 
were not so happy. Well, they were still played music, so I guess it's good, but it was not so... Well, this is a sophisticated which, thing already. Which means that really the, the, the way the ragas have been uh, invented or have been, I don't know, composed, been found, yeah, uh, is it really has something... Something true. Meaningful, to yeah, something oh. true, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that harmony of the evening and the morning. Yes, right. You know, there's know. Uh, if, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, there's even an experiment that's uh, taken place where uh, they're experimenting with the music of the plants, mm -hmm. where there are some um, you know some mechanisms put onto the plants with 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 an instrument with with the and the music of that particular plant is derived. So there is a music of the rose, there is music of tulips, there's music of uh, the banyan tree, and there are albums and there are orchestras that people do uh, based on this. Really? I never heard of it. This is something yeah, interesting. Um, I would love to see it. Is there somewhere on YouTube of this? Yeah, or... I'll, I'll share the link with you. Oh, great. Please send the link. It would be lovely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, orchestras, it's a big thing. Yeah. I know that there are sounds of the universe and each planet has a particular sound. Have you heard the sound of Earth? Yeah, this is an amazing core. It's like a choir. I never heard anything more beautiful. It's like really a huge choir, uh, like with many billions of people singing in different tunes. Uh, and other planets also, like Jupiter, or very scary, or the sound of the sun, which is also vibrating and sounding. You can hear these sounds, they are really deeply moving. Yeah, yeah. These, uh, these are, this is a new research uh, in, into the vibrations, yeah? vibrations which are becoming, which are making our immune system stronger, the vibrations which, like homeopathy, which, is, which can re recover our illnesses because it has a vibration, slightest vibration which goes into the blood. In, in our will, we had this zapper, you know, uh, many people had amoeba, very bad um, bacteria which creates uh, diarrhea, most probably those who, of you who lived in Oro will know about it. So, and we, uh, the guy created a zapper with particular something 500 hertz, which, uh, which goes straight into your blood. You don't even feel it. It's a very low, low frequency um, from the battery. <laughs> I have <And> one. <laughs> you have still, yes. And I, mm -hmm. I cured myself a zapper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that bacteria doesn't like it, doesn't like that vibration in the blood. And it leaves, you can cure yourself with simple vibration going to the blood. So this is the sound, the, the theory of the vibrations, which we, which we are only discovering now. Yeah? So I believe that the flowers vibrate in different ways, only we don't hear it. We don't have that instrument to really perceive it. But once we find the instrument, see the spectrum that would be amazing to relate to it in in our own way great thank you for sharing all these um, interesting thoughts and one more uh, I, I don't know you might have heard about it there was this experiment with the water the the shape of the water the molecules in the water mm -hmm. there was this music which they played uh, like two different kinds of music. One was some very disruptive music and other one was a very peaceful, something very calm. I don't remember the exact music, but the shape of the water changed. Like the water really healed. The molecules of the water were formed in a very different manner. And in the other set of uh, this experiment, where a different kind of music was played, the disruptive music, the, the molecules of the water reacted in a very different way. Like it got really, yeah. uh, in, a, in a messed up uh, yeah, I think yeah. one was, uh, was was. Mm. Sorry. It's the study of semantics, Doctor yeah, Hans yeah. Jenny. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There, there is the whole uh, Japanese. You wanted to say something, uh, Melissa? 
No, just to say that one was uh, classical music and some mm -hmm. of the works in classical music are also linked with the, um, uh, how you say in English, golden number, the, you know, they, they are, they are, um, they, mentioned, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. they are, yeah, based on the, on the golden number, which you can, I mean, you can find the golden number in the, in the frequencies that are uh in the in in the in, in the in the music and i think the other one was uh something like uh, metal uh hard rock metal something like that mm -hmm. which is not based on <laughs> right. on the that's <laughs> yeah yeah the blast of the bass and so on i i saw that the animals also love the music I saw the videos where the person plays clarinet to the cows and they all run and they all stand there. They stop eating. They're just listening to the music. <laughs> so there's something about the sound. Yeah? Definitely. Of course, this blast of the rock and roll, which is boosting the vital energy. But what it does also, it is very harmful for our consciousness, yeah, for our physical consciousness. Yeah? All these concerts with very high decibels, you know, which are, have you been to those? I, I can't stand a high music, especially with bass, boo, 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 the whole body like um, totally disturbed. Mm. I am running away from this now, yeah? but when I was young, uh, you wanted to have it, yeah, because it is something like initiation to life or some kind of, you know, boosting your energy with vital force. Now, Vladimir, different people have different frequency. Like, a uh, few people when, uh, like, it, it, it happens to me. I don't know about others. So when I speak to certain people, like when I listen to certain people, um. I, it, it just triggers me in some way. I don't know what happens, but like this, I do not really feel, um, I just don't feel okay. And when I listen to certain people, it's like, like for example, in this session, I feel very nice. It's quite, it's very healing. And you, after the session, I'd like to just go to bed and sleep. But like there are other sessions or there are other interactions which will just uh, trigger something and it's too too much. I, I don't know what, what is it like this. Yeah, there can be also interference, not necessarily from the presentation itself, but something behind it found a way through. Oh, I don't think it's, sometimes it is from people, yes, because they are open to those influences and they bring it in. But that means you have to deal with your own kind of field of, yeah, you have to be yourself strong enough to withhold all the oppressions of mortals as the as the veda would say abhisyama pritsutir martiana may we withstand the oppression of mortals so that kind of to withstand the pressing of these mortal powers which are trying to fill in and to to get fun out of you some energy yeah Usually this is the case. And the more you are developed, the more you will have a challenge because these forces want to come more and more when you are peaceful, when you have something very, very much established because they want also to become that. <laughs> so they are kind of coming to you to, <laughs> to borrow from you <laughs> your own. And uh, if you are weak, not established enough, you may lose your balance. So. And so they eat up all the energy. But you know, I would like to add that yeah, these sessions are really very calming and healing. In fact, um, just the way you take us through the whole thing and the way you talk, and it's uh, it's very calming. I have the best sleep on Mondays. Thank you. <laughs> same, 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 yeah. least, at least some some years yes sleep is a good thing i also uh, sleep very badly and i would love to have a good sleep really so i'm kind of praying for good sleep give me a good sleep you know mother you can listen, you can listen to your oh, session oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some people do this they told me in uh, i have so, uh, sessions in russian also they they put it before sleep and then they go into this meditation and sleep so there but is you can try music. listening to music of the plants it may just help you sleep 
Mm. I've emailed it to all of you. Yeah, this is, I would love to hear. So please send us this link to all of us. Yeah. I would love to see that, uh, the, how roses are sounding. And it would be amazing to see lotus. Uh, you see, mother saw something in, in the plants. She saw the spirit of them. She gave the significances of plants. Uh, mm -hmm. Rose is the passion for the divine, for example. If you combine with different colors, for example, if it is red rose, it is a deep, vital passion, passionate love. If it is uh, uh, yellow, it is mental love for the divine. If it is uh, uh, rosy, then it is psychic love for the divine. So you could see that the color changes kind of the location, but still that passionate love is still staying, but from different levels of consciousness. I would love to hear the music. It would give us the vibration. It would give us another entry to the spirit of the flowers. Uh, there is a book which is called Significances of the Flowers, or the, where Mother describes them also. I think mm. this is the greatest philosophical book you can ever read because the whole yeah. philosophy of relations are, is there in the flowers, <laughs> what they represent. Okay, great. Let's close with mantra for today. Om Sarve Bhavanto Sukhinaha Sarve Santo Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu ma kashchit dukha bhag bhavet Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Namaste